Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech, and today Apple released iOS 26.2 Beta 2. iOS 26.2 Beta 2 is available to developers, and iOS 26.2 Public Beta 2 should be out soon, hopefully by tomorrow at the latest. Now this came in at 1.59 gigabytes. that's on my iPhone 17 Pro Max, and was about the same size on the other devices here. Along with this, Apple also released iPadOS 26.2 Beta 2, macOS 26.2 Beta 2, and the other Beta 2 updates for TV OS, HomePod OS, Vision OS, and Watch OS as well. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the build number and talk about what's new. So we'll go to settings, then we'll go back to general, then about. As you can see, the build number is 23C5033H. And this particular build does have a modem update. So if you're coming from beta one to beta two, there should be a modem update. Hopefully it helps with overall connectivity and connections with 5G and other things. Also, one other thing I wanted to mention is that the update is available for the iPhone Air again. They actually removed it, removed the build entirely. Now you can download and install it on the iPhone Air. So they removed it for anything with the Apple modems with the C1 and C1X modems. Now, as far as new features, well, there was no hello screen this time, but we have a new feature with Apple CarPlay. You can now turn off your pinned messages. So in CarPlay, where it had pinned messages at the top, which I particularly didn't care for, you can now turn them off so it no longer mirrors what you have on your iPhone. Liquid Glass gets a little bit of an update, and we know we can modify it here a little bit with Liquid Glass with last week's update with the slider here with Beta 1, but now it seems that Apple is bringing those Liquid Glass sort of experiences or animations back with this update. You can see where it says depth effect, it sort of bounces out, and we see the same thing on the home screen. If we go home, try and customize here, tap the edit menu, it just sort of bounces into view. Where before, on beta one, it doesn't do that. So again, if we go here, we'll tap edit on beta one, tap it again, there we go. And again, on beta one, it pops out. Now it's sort of more animated where it just looks a little bit better, closer to what we had announced at WWDC with the original iOS 26 update. Aside from the animation change, everything seems to be a little bit faster as far as the overall speed. Swiping between the songs like we can do now seems to have a faster animation speed. And if we compare this side by side, let's take a look. And if we look at beta one with the animation speed, swiping back and forth compared to beta two, it looks like it's sped up a little bit. So overall seems to be a little bit faster. You'll find this throughout swiping between home and new and radio and all of the different menus throughout iOS 26.2 beta two. As far as other new features and changes, if we go into the new games app that was introduced with iOS 26, you'll see we're greeted with a new splash screen. It says filter your library, sort and filter by category, size, and more. I'll show you that in a moment. Also, we have native controller support. So it says navigate the games app with improved controller support and also track challenges scores. So it says see your scores update in real time as you play. So if we tap continue, if we go down to the bottom, go to library, we have a menu here. And again, it pops out with that new animation and you'll see recent games, name, size on this iPhone, Apple Arcade and others. So you can scroll down and then you have categories as well. If we go into the measure app and then go to the level, it's been redesigned with liquid glass. You can see it here as the glass passes over the number here, how it changes just like real glass. So again, as you bring it side to side, you can see that overall effect looks really great. Within settings, if we go into messages, if we scroll down, they've made a change here to clarify things. It says retry as text message. Prior to this update with beta one and before this, it said send as text message. I think it makes a little bit more sense here where you may want to retry sending a message if iMessage is unavailable. Also, it seems like we have RCS encryption in this update, according to different information in the code. So hopefully carriers support this very soon, but we should have that encryption option. If we go over into the reminders app, the first time you open it, you'll get a new splash screen going over the new features we talked about with beta one. So it says, get an alarm, mark a reminder as urgent and get an alarm when it's due. You can snooze your alarm if you can't get to it right away and you can stay reminded. It says if you snooze or stop, a live activity remains you to open, reschedule or complete the reminder. So you can just go ahead and tap continue, create new ones, and then automatically have it remind you if you want to. So within the reminders app, if we go to create it, they've also made a change here. So you'll see it says new reminder and now we have an urgent switch. Prior to this update, it was a little bit different. If we created a new one, you'll see that we had date and time, but urgent was located underneath time. So now they've made it its own little menu here. So you can enable this and then set maybe a due date and a time to alarm. 
iOS 26.2 so far includes quite a few new features. We have that liquid glass slider on the lock screen, health sleep score updates, podcast updates, news updates, updates to live translation, and maybe some other things as well in the future. So we'll keep track of this. We'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up if we find any additional features, and of course go over all of them once it releases to the public. As far as other releases today, well, Apple released their digital ID for passports. I made a separate video about this, but you can find it in the Apple wallet. If you just go into wallet here, if you tap the plus button at the top and then go to driver's licenses and ID cards, you'll see digital ID listed under United States. You can go into it and then add a digital ID using your U.S. passport. You can use it at TSA checkpoints and other places in the future. So it's only available in the USA so far. And again, I have a full video explaining everything about it from privacy, security and everything else. Also, Apple announced one other thing today, and it's some new games. We've been waiting for, well, really an Apple TV and a HomePod mini, but yesterday they introduced the iPhone Pocket, which maybe we'll try and get our hands on it, see what it's like, but basically it's a designer pouch for your iPhone. Also, they announced SpongeBob, Patty Pursuit 2, and a few other arcade games. You can see Power Wash Simulator is coming to Apple Arcade, along with a couple other games as well. So those were announced recently or today, and they should be available soon. When it comes to bugs and bug fixes, well, there's a couple things to talk about that's good news. If we go into the control center, it seems like the ghosting is gone. So it may still be there, but I think it's mostly gone. You'll see it disappears, it just has that nice fade out, and it's much faster swiping between the screens. The same is true when swiping between the widget screen, it no longer drops frames, it's nice and fast and smooth, and also the overall experience is just faster. We'll talk about performance in a moment, but there are still some issues. So it did fix stutters overall, and it seems very smooth, but if we go to the app library, tap in it here, it's slow to open. I'm not sure why this happens, as it only happens on this phone, it seems. If we go on the 16 Pro Max with Beta 1 where it returned, it's instant on that phone. So I'm not sure what the difference is, but when iOS 26.1 came out, it fixed it, but then of course it's broke again with Beta 1 and Beta 2. Also, the wallpaper dimming bug still exists, so you'll see how vibrant and nice the wallpaper is. If you scroll up, it desaturates a little. Now this time it may be a little bit more subtle, but it definitely gets a little bit more dim. Better than before, so maybe they're fixing it finally. Also, we will have to test CarPlay, but it did connect nice and quick. No real issues when I was testing it earlier with the new feature, and it seems to be nice and fast. But we'll talk about it in the weekend follow-up video, but it does seem to affect specific cars. There's also a couple things to note. If we go into Apple's public-facing release notes, Within the release notes, you'll see here it says airdrop, there's a known issue. Devices set to everyone on iOS 26.2 beta 1 are not discoverable by devices on 26.2 beta 2. It says the workaround is update both to beta 2. So that's something to note, as we do expect the overall airdrop feature to get an update soon. Maybe allow for 30 minutes or something like that. If we go into airdrop, you'll see here everyone for 10 minutes. There is some information in the code that may allow this to be a little bit longer from now on. Also, we have instruments for resolved issues, also permission kit API known issues, store kit has resolved issues and known issues, and a few other things as well. The watch face gallery, for example, watch face gallery text is in English only, so that's a known issue. So if you're facing any other issues, make sure you report them in the feedback app. So if you haven't done that already, just go to feedback and you can report it there. When it comes to releases, well, iOS 26.2 Beta 2 may have been released early this week to put it back on schedule, similar to last year's releases. So it seemed like we are about a week or so behind, and also it does need to release by a certain time in December to allow for some of the updates, such as third-party application installation allowed in Japan, and some options with Safari for search. So those things have to comply with Japanese law and should be included with this update. So maybe that's why they pushed it out now, so that we can be on track for quick releases releases. So based on that, I would expect another release with iOS 26.2 beta 3 sometime next week. Now we could get midweek releases. We could have a Monday release. We don't really know at this point. Then iOS 26.2's public release, I would expect it to be out sometime around the second or third week of December. I believe the Japanese compliance law comes into effect on the 19th, so it would have to be before then. Then we'll have iOS 26.3 beta 1, and typically that will be it until the new year. Normally we have to wait until the second or third week of January for a new beta release after the 26.3 beta 1 release. So that's normally what we have every year, and typically what we can expect. 
Also, many have been asking if we expect an iOS 26.1.1. That's because Apple stopped signing iOS 26.0.1, only leaving iOS 26.1 as an option to downgrade or restore from. So based on that, it's very likely we could get an iOS 26.1.1 before the public release of iOS 26.2. It's similar to what we had last year, but there's no sign of it so far. But it could be this week, it could be next week. But again, there's no sign of it just yet, but Apple seems to be surprising with releases lately. If you're wondering if you should install iOS 26.2 beta 2, if you're on iOS 26.2 beta 1, then absolutely install it, test it out, provide feedback, like I mentioned before, if you're having issues and help Apple make better software. And that's why we get to try this out earlier. However, if you're on iOS 26.1 public release, I would probably hold off and not try and solve any issues with a beta as it will typically have additional bugs or bugs you weren't expecting. So at this point, I would just use 26.1 as it's generally pretty good at this point. Now, as far as performance, it seems pretty fast. Like I mentioned, that stuttering is gone, at least on the 17 Pro Max. However, the lag is still there for the app library. So overall performance with things such as ProMotion, it does seem to be a little bit faster as far as ramping up. Smoothness, when it comes to the overall menus that I showed you before, it's nice and fast. Just going in, going to edit. Try that again, going to edit. Things pop up quickly like you would expect. Again, the animations are very nice and very fast this time around. However, we'll have to test it over the next few days, see if it stays that way, improves, or anything else. When it comes to overall heat, the phone was a little bit warm, as you would expect after you install an update, but very cool to the touch right now. So no real issues there. Again, we'll see how it is after a few days when it's done processing in the background, and we'll check it with a thermal camera then. When it comes to overall battery, well, I do plan to use the beta full time this time around. So I didn't switch to it on my main phone just yet, but I plan to do that today. And if we go to the battery, Go to battery health on this phone. This one's only got 12 cycles with 100% capacity, but on my main phone running iOS 26.1, you'll see it was a little stuttery there, even with the public release. I've been using this full time on 26.1 and you'll see here with battery health, I'm at 50 cycles with 100%. So I have to charge this thing all the time because of the small battery. In fact, I charged it twice as I'm trying something out, backing up a lot of data in the background. But overall, you'll see five hours and nine minutes of screen active time the other day. I'm getting pretty good battery life on the iPhone Air and it's holding up well. So I would expect it to improve once iOS 26.2 releases. When it comes to overall storage, let's go ahead and take a look here. So we'll go back, go to general and iPhone storage, and let's see what it's taking up compared to 26.1. So if we scroll down to the bottom, you'll see iOS on 26.1 is taking up 20.28 gigabytes, where it's taking up 20.56 gigabytes on iOS 26.2 beta 2. So Apple intelligence is identical as far as the overall size. And then iOS is taking up 13.94 compared to 13.66. So very close overall. And you'll see system data is quite low on 26.2 so far. However, this goes up and down as needed. And of course will change throughout the day, as long as you have enough storage available. Available. Now, when it comes to overall benchmarks, let's go ahead and run that. I ran it a little bit earlier, but usually if you run it again, when things settle down, it speeds up a little bit or has better scores. Benchmarks completed and we scored 3,835 for single core, 9,806 for multi-core. When I ran it before, it was a little bit slower. And typically when you run this a couple different times, it will bump up to over 10,000 for multi-core. Again, we'll check that in the weekend follow-up video and see how it is. And so that's everything with iOS 26.2 beta 2. Of course, if there's additional features, we'll talk about those in the weekend follow-up video, along with battery performance and much more. Let me know if you've found anything else and how it's going for you in the comments below. And of course, I'll link this wallpaper in the description like I normally do. If you haven't subscribed already though, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. This is Aaron. I'll see you next time.